It's Tuesday, May 17, and this is your Barbados Today Evening News Update. A warm welcome to you. The Barbados government is still missing the mark despite a recent upbeat report from the International Monetary Fund on the island's economic performance. So says former opposition leader Bishop Joseph Adderley. He tells Barbados Today while government has ticked all the right boxes for the IMF, it has not eased the pain facing Barbadians. When the IMF speaks like that, it is not speaking with reference to the pain that people are experiencing on the ground. So to be able to address in a macro way some of the problems facing the economy is fine. But unless the address of those conditions in the economy which cause pain to people in their pockets and on the ground also takes place, then I think we're still missing the mark. So you can satisfy the IMF, but it does not mean that you have satisfied the populace, the population of Barbados, that your policies are working necessarily fully so in their interest. Adderley says there needs to be a clear restructuring of the Barbados economy to put the island on a growth path. We still have an economy that is structured on that fairly singular premise, important though it be, and that is the, the platform of, of tourism. We need to see that diversified so that we pursue a tourism uh, profile and order and offer a product that is a bit more than sun and sea and sand, and that is a bit more than a coastal tourism economy uh, built around the development of infrastructure on the coastline. We need to diversify the product diversify the profile which relates to our tourism. We need to look at things like uh, culture, the cultural industries, uh, the tech industries, uh, innovation, sports, totally so the creative economy. One of the biggest industries in the world right now is the sports industry. We could not make sportable sport. We need to more seriously and in a more democratic fashion pursue initiatives in renewable energy sector. We need to establish more agribusiness-type efforts around the whole sector of agriculture. Agriculture is not field and land always and only, but it is very, um, it's a very tech-savvy kind of a sector in today's world so that you can do a lot in agriculture in limited space. So agribusiness is what I'm talking about and not simply the traditional agriculture. So is that not, it's not just about land and, and, and Planting, and we need to be very strategic in where we go about that. Business Minister Kerry Simmons is standing by the government's decision to award Jamaica company Chaka Caribbean Adventures a 25 year lease to operate Harrison's Cave. Speaking in Parliament today during debate on the cave's Amendment Bill 2022, the senior minister made clear that Chaka made the better bid compared to those made by local companies, which he described as disappointing. There were some Barbadian companies that participated, and we would have been the very happiest campers in the world if when tenders had been opened, we had seen stuff other than that which was mundane. We would have been the happiest campers in the world, Mr. Speaker, sir, if we didn't open a tender and see that the future of Harrison's Cave as an, uh, 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 as an attraction that had to be managed in accordance with best practices um, and a product that should be enhanced, that the approach to that, sir, would be to get new trams and run the trams for 24 hours a day if possible so that you could put more people through the cave and carry them along um, on another experience after that experience was over. We will be the happiest campers in the world, Mr. Speaker, sir, if we were able to open tenders and find that the imagination of the private sector in this country was such that they were saying that they would do more than some adjustments in the roof of the waiting room, Mr. Speaker, sir. But that was the, the mundane. And, and it is disappointing. It is disappointing, sir, because the, the premier tourism destination in Barbados, in the Caribbean, is in fact, in, in this part of the Caribbean, is Barbados. And there's no doubt about that. And I don't say that in, in the spirit of braggadocio. I say it, sir, because we expect, therefore, that the principal players in tourism would step up to the plate at, in, and, and with the greatest degree of creativity, partner with government in an opportunity to make sure that this unique tourism attraction 
can be the best in class and hold and law his head up alongside any in the world. The residents of Allen View St. Thomas, who own land near to Harrison's Cave, will soon be relocated by government. Word of this from Member of Parliament for the area, Cynthia Ford, as she contributed to today's debate in Parliament. Ford told the house persons deemed to be living in the environmental protection zone could not expand their houses, build new homes, or rear livestock after it was realized they were presenting dangers to Harrison's Cave. The government has determined that those who have land, land that is laying fallow because they cannot build the houses, it is their land, they have been paying land tax, but they cannot build or expand. Those persons who cannot build on those spots have been given some assurance that the spots at 40 acre will be made available for them. I think there are just over 40 spots at 40 acre that I have been assured the residents of Allen View will be able to relocate in order for those who would be on the, on, the, on the dome of the cave, as well as those who cannot build at all. And for me, that is one of the most fundamental mental things that can happen to those residents, because you're talking just about four or five miles away from Allen View, where they will still be close. It's World Hypertension Day today, and Chief Executive Officer of the Heart and Stroke Foundation, Michelle Daniel, is urging Barbadians to treat the condition known as the silent killer seriously. She said four out of every 10 Barbadians suffer from hypertension, and she stressed that it's important that everyone know their numbers. 50% of the population are probably walking around not knowing that they have hypertension. So it's really important for people to know in the latest COVID-19 update, a total of 469 people, 193 males and 276 females, tested positive for the viral illness on Monday from among the 1,952 tests carried out by the Besta Santos Public Health Laboratory. Of the positive cases, 139 persons were under the age of 18 and 330 were 18 years and older. There were 95 people in isolation facilities, while 4,340 were in home isolation. As of May 16, there were 434 COVID-19 related deaths. There's regional and international news after this short break. More oxygen means more energy, means more adventure. Cure Oxygen, natural spring water infused with more oxygen to improve your energy, immunity and performance. The next generation of hydration. Cure Oxygen, nature's ultimate water. Caribbean Cool is a refreshing juice drink that contains 100% vitamin C that you can enjoy any time of the day. It has a refreshingly awesome range of Caribbean flavors. Moby, orange, fruit punch, pineapple, sorrel and pineapple coconut. Suitable for any occasion. Caribbean Cool. To regional news, in Jamaica, a medical officer is urging citizens not to drop their mask just yet in the face of rising COVID-19 cases. Cordian Barrett of Television Jamaica tells us more. Since the dropping of mask mandate, fewer people have been wearing masks in public spaces. During the recent St. James Municipal Monthly Meeting, Medical Officer for St. James, Dr. Phillips Kelly, made the observation also when 50% of those in attendance opted not to wear any mask, a concern as she pointed to increasing COVID-19 positivity rate in the parish. Having sorted results for COVID-19, we note that the numbers are increasing again. And for St. James, for the samples that we would have taken at the St. James Health Department, 
for the week that ended the 6th of May, we had a 65% positivity rate. But one member sought to justify the lack of mask wearing with being vaccinated. This was her response. The information that comes with the results is not just the fact that persons have been tested on a particular day and what their result is, but what also comes is their vaccination status. And when I look in the red, and red is positive, and in this instance, not good, we have fully vaccinated persons whose results are positive. On the international scene, extreme weather is affecting millions of people across South Asia and the Middle East. Health warnings have been issued in northern India, where temperatures have soared to 49 degrees Celsius. Yogin Tutunde bathes outdoors as he prepares for a long day at this construction site where he lives with his family in a makeshift shack. Like hundreds of millions of Indians, he's forced to risk their health and work in the record-breaking heat. Earlier we did masonry of 100 feet, but now we can do only 70 feet. Our contractors often get angry with us because of this. I feel weak and need to rest for a day or two. It's too hot. But if we don't work, what will we eat? Summer in parts of South Asia arrived early this year. March was the hottest in a century in the region, while April broke several records. Average temperatures are 6 to 9 degrees Celsius above normal. Some areas in New Delhi recently surpassed 49 degrees. Chakobabad in southeast Pakistan reached an all-time high of 51 degrees. Dozens of people have died of heat-related illnesses in Pakistan, while millions are struggling without basic amenities such as access to clean water and electricity. We haven't seen such a heat wave before. We're worried because our livestock sick due to the excessive heat. The vegetation's dried up, the water table's going down. We have to use wet clothes to cover ourselves to try to beat the heat. That's news, but for the very latest, visit our website at www.barbidistoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook. And sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media and Bus Terminals, as well as Screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM.